Good evening and welcome to Any Move In. It's Friday the 18th of December and we all know what happens this time next week. I hope you're all set, all organised, got all your shopping done, got all your mountains of food in. Um, we're organised, uh, we bought an extra pack of pork pies this week so we should be sorted. Um, tonight we've got something a bit different. Uh, Tom's busy tonight so I'm joined by Tony Hurst, the, the man with the... Uh, the, the biggest repertoire of music on the planet, as far as I know. Evening, Tony. Hi, you, Andy, mate. How you? Have you had a good week, mate? Yeah, not too bad. Been a busy week, but uh, apart from that, it's all been good. I think oh, my sound excellent. levels are a bit low here, so hi to everyone in the chat there. I'm going to sort out my sound again. It happens every day, every time I restart Windows, I think. I've got a sound thing that resets itself. Sorry about that. Well, it sounds brilliant if, to me, but, um, yeah, and we're also joined by somebody I've been waiting a heck of a long time to talk to, it seems, and that is Mark Cox from the Love, Love Kitchen in Liverpool. Good evening, Mark. Good evening, folks. Glad to be on your show, Pud. It's a pleasure to have you on. After all I've seen about the fantastic work you're doing, it's the kind of thing we need to be talking about, I think. Absolutely, especially this time of year. That's what I was saying in the kind of little blog I put up to uh, tell people what's coming up. I said, you know, if it weren't for people like yourselves at this time of year, these people yeah. would be freezing to the pavement and um, nothing to eat. So I'm absolutely amazed at what you guys are doing and uh, more power to your elbow. Can oh, you nice tell one. us a little bit about how you got started or how you got involved with the Love Kitchen? Well, I've seen something on Facebook um, posted by... Kevin, Kevin, um, I've got his name, oh, Kevin Martin, Kevin Martin, um, damn his name's gone out of me, I don't remember that before as well, anyway, uh, this Kev lad and a few others, it all started by, over the road from Lime Street on the steps of St George's Hall, where we had bags of clothes, um, and we were donning Viva Vendetta masks just to raise awareness, you know, and, as, and then not many people like, turned up, so he, he must have decided to relocate where, in Williamson Square. So then it, um, it was his idea to bring table, uh, a stove, um, all kinds of bits and bobs, uh, toiletries, tin, tin food, um, big pan of you name it, whatever they want to... Whatever, whatever's cooking on the menu, scouse or whatever, uh, soup, um, loads of clothing again, important stuff like scarves, gloves, um, things like that, coats and whatnot. And then we just, we just like go around, a few of us go around town uh, looking for them, bring them in, um, and basically that's how it started. And it, it, it happens every Saturday. So I'm back there again tomorrow. It's from eleven till four. It is. So uh, it's it's brilliant. It's really brilliant. You get talking to them, and you know they've all had these lives. And honest to God, some of the some of the stories. Uh, we have one that we call Grandad. His name's Mark. <laughs> he doesn't like. He doesn't like the way. <laughs> he doesn't like call, getting called Grandad for some reason. I'm like this is Rachel. This is calling him Grandad. <laughs> I'm not, I'm more like your dad, not Grandad. <laughs> yeah, but that that's how it started. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Um, and th- th- there was another. There was another time. Um, loads of others. Uh, uh, this, these other organisations turned up. From um, uh, what is it? Where they helped them? Where, where they helped them get in, to get onto the house and you know get a house basically. Oh yeah. And uh, all, all most of them that were in the uh, bomb, not the bomb out shit. Most of them that were in the um, the bank that they that they took over before they were uh, unlawfully evicted. Uh, they, they, they they used their, um, the police used a, a cutter to cut through the door of a uh, grade two listed building. Um, and you wouldn't believe this. Um, they, they were all vacating the uh, the, the, the bank. Um, so most of them are in there, friends of mine. Uh, I went in there myself, said hello to it, most of them. Um, but that was the only time I ever, I ever went in there. Um, but I was observing most of the time when they were on the balcony. 
Um, one of them, one of them uh, shouted, "Cannabis cures cancer." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she, she's a rebel here. Careful, uh, uh, there, Mark. That's enough to get a Skype shut down. It usually does when you mention curing cancer. Oh. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah so they, they basically like uh, were evicted by old Bill early hours in the morning. Mm. Yeah, so we yeah we have this all, we have this every week, every Saturday without fail, and it's eleven till four, and most of them now turn up in droves for something to eat and a drink, something to they look through the clothes. Um, and they, they, they sit and talk to us and we, you know, raise awareness to the shoppers. Last Saturday, um, Martin turned up. This is another another guy. Um, basically, like, asking people to sign a um, petition regarding homelessness. Um, mo- loads of people signed the petitions. And he, he's got this thing going now where... This this organisation they've, they've organised themselves in St Helens, um, where they get old dolls and put essentials in the old dolls and just basically give them out. And we also have anonymous um, feeding the homeless six o'clock most nights in town, which is you know, it's it's really good what they're doing. It's, you know it's not just us, but we're just of a Saturday. But like when we get we, when we can get to them, we, we do, you know. That's excellent. Mate. So, have you have you noticed that? I know you said you've noticed the homeless people are finding you in droves now. What's it like for the support you're getting from people helping out? Really good. People give people regularly give us donations. Um, so we have a little jar full of change, and what we do with that, we just go and get more stuff. From the shops, whether it be plastic cups or whatever, more tin stuffs, things like that. Yeah, it's brilliant. Low, they're really lovely people. Really lovely people. You can't yeah. fault them. I met some lovely people when I was homeless myself. Um, it's just got a different outlook on life altogether to, to the rest of us, haven't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I haven't. I, I can see the chat. Uh, greetings, Babs. <laughs> uh, yeah, I can see the <laughs> greetings, folks. I think yeah. I'll have to dig yeah. out ferry across the Mersey when I for the break. <laughs> yeah, 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 I know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, me, me and a friend of mine um, when when looking for them, and we come across one on the doorway. So we decided to uh, sit and talk to her. Because we were sitting talking to her, we were giving giving her stuff, giving her change, and put, giving her, I was giving her all my silver. Mm. My mate was giving her some smokes. And then um, loads of people started like putting, giving her money. So it, it, it's if you do something like that, uh, you know, it makes, makes people, like, a bit of love and compassion, do you know what I mean? It makes people want to do the same. That's what that's what our t- our intentions was, just just you know. Yeah, <coughs> I mean, um, the way we are now, I mean, all this food bank, and um, I think we, it's pretty much foregone conclusion. Even though they said it was going to be delayed, they're going to be cutting the uh, working tax credits now, so there's going to be an awful lot more people in this position, isn't there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's outrageous what they're doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there was someone outside the um, job centre uh, with a band for the placard because he'd been sanctioned. Absolute joke, honest to God. Yeah. They seem to be going heavy with the sanctions. They've got targets, haven't they? Getting as many yeah, people off. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. If your face fits, you're all right. But yeah, they've, they've, they've got tar- these targets, absolutely, yeah. Do you, do you get many contributions from corporations or any shops or anything with your cups and things like that don't they help out in any ways yeah we regularly do ask uh, the shops for stuff and uh, Sainsbury's has give us stuff um, yeah a couple of shops have helped out nice one, well, it's good to hear someone's having it, making an effort and uh, good to hear what you're doing now yeah yeah and we, we, we regularly raise awareness yeah, you know. I, I heard about a bit back which which I found really disgusting 
uh, a lot of the supermarkets now are starting putting locks on their skips and actually placing the skips in compounds that are locked with barbed wire and cameras and all that crap so that if they throw out food that's out of date, people who are starving can't actually get it and sometimes even spray it with dye. Um, and bleach. Yeah, and also uh, there was a couple in court, but the judge the judge threw it out because um, they were arrested taking food, taking sc- scrap food, but the supermarket had, had in the back the back of it, and they got Nick taking it. So uh, they were up in court, but the judge was dead lenient. He, he said, like you know, they, he had their plate, you know, because they were they were starving, they were hungry because of these cuts. Yeah, well, Be- bedroom bedroom tax and stuff. Yeah, well, if people are throwing away food, that's all right. It might have a sell by date on it that's either here or very close. But if that food's still edible, um, to me, it's it's an absolute crime to be stopping people who need that food from taking it. I mean, when I lived over in Spain, um, we used to have a bin collection every day. But also that, like for larger items like furniture and stuff like that, you just used to leave it out in the street, and then every so often the council would come round and collect whatever was left. Because pretty much, if anything was half decent, somebody else would find a use for it. You know, if you've got a chest of drawers or a chair or a table or something you didn't want anymore, you put it out in the street. Somebody else would think, "Oh, that's better than what I've got," and they take it. Absolutely. Yeah, because it could, someone could use it. You know what I mean. Someone's going to be able to use it. It's 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 silly. Uh, the, you know the the, the governments, honest to God, you are you are these people, and we, we created them. You know. Mm. Well, they're supposed to represent our interests, but it's quite clear to F- far all, from it. <laughs> they're not doing any such thing. They're only representing their own interests and. Those of the uh, their corporate sponsors. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, Babs is yeah. saying that companies have no empathy. Yeah, that's pretty much right. But what they do have is a a sense of honour about their corporate reputations at a certain level. So sometimes they can be swayed to do the right thing, even if it's not for the right reasons. No, mm. yeah. I noticed Vin's there saying uh, a lot of foods, even with mould on it, is still perfectly edible. I mean, yeah, I mean, I've, I've lost count of the number of times I've kind of picked the mouldy bits off the bread or cut the mouldy bits off the cheese before I've eaten it, and uh, yeah, it all tastes fine. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, cheese, you know, mm. bread. You, I mean, you can get, use mouldy bread even. Yeah, you know, for a what is it? Just when it goes hard, you can use it for um, breadcrumbs. Yeah, breadcrumbs. Oh yeah. <coughs> yeah. So I'm looking forward to tomorrow's. Uh huh. Have you yeah, got a ju- special plan for tomorrow? Yeah, I'm just wondering what's on the what will be on the menu. <laughs> yeah, and who's cooking it? But uh, I've got a, I've got a big load of clothes to take down myself, so I'll be taking a few down. Um, the usual, the u- we'll probably see the usual uh, homeless there. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know whether there's another, another. I, I heard last Saturday that there was supposed to be another march regarding the Syria, but um, I'll leave the others to that. I want to, see, I want to see to the uh, the ones who are in need. You know, spend a bit of time with them. So they're going on these marches. It's good like to uh, wake the, sh- the the people up, like, but. Yeah, you were saying um, before we came on air last week that that um, you kind of met up with an um, anti-war march, and the, the two the two causes seem to come together and um, mutual benefit there. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, I'm just checking that website. Oh, could you say that again? Sorry. You were just saying before we came on air that um, you met up with an anti-war march last week, was it? And yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was to do with um, them bomb- bombing Syria. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I seen something on there. I seen a Syrian girl on Facebook, um, and I listened to what she said. And basically, what what, what the headline of the talk was: uh, "The New World Order Hates Syria." 
I heard, listening to what she said, like, Syria, I, I've had nothing to do with the corporations. They don't want nothing, absolutely nothing to do. And they're the only one. That's the only country they can't get at. And yeah. that's why that's why they're doing all this, to, to, you know. Well, also, there's a very short list of countries without a Rothschild central bank, uh, Syria being one of them. Yeah, yeah. Iraq was on that list till they invaded, so was Libya, and so on and so on. Um, so we can kind of see the way it's going and where all this action's coming from, can't we? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, um, there was... Oh, yeah, I forgot to tell you. Uh, that friend of mine, Amanda Doyle... Oh, yeah. Uh, ...was talking... I was talking to her on Facebook earlier on. Uh, it's the first time I'd met her mum. Um... They were, both, they were both on the train going to town. And uh, she, when we were outside the bank, when we were outside the bank that they were occupying, uh, the police were giving out dispersal orders, which we thought, oh, you know, sod use. Anyway, um, Amanda had just got back off her holidays the day before. She threw a sandwich towards them, wrapped up of, wrapped up in that, but she threw a sandwich up towards the balcony. But it met, it missed them and it fell behind these barricades. Because I, I was there when um, I was standing outside it when uh, they turned up, putting barricades round the doorway. So, uh, and if you cross that, you know you did you get nicked and what, what bullshit is that, you know? So um, she she threw sandwiches and de nicked her. Um, she went to the magistrates. I met her at the magistrates. Mm-hmm. Um, we were we were waiting. It was a long wait, gotta say. Yeah. Um, and then I walked in the call. F- I walked into the call first. Uh, sat at the back, got me no pad and pen and pencil because it uh, makes them nervous. And then she came in. Um, went before, went into the dock. We all know what the dock and the bench are, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, what a farce! No looking around. If if the face on the magistrate, if if she the smile, the face of the cave, then. <laughs> <laughs> she looked really stern looking I thought uh-huh. God, goodness me but I was just looking around the room and I just thought what a joke this is the, the clerk done all, most of the talk and as, as she does you know yeah so um, it's now been referred to the crown can you believe that yeah, joke, isn't it? It, it's an absolute joke well, unfortunately, it's not funny, though, is it? Um, if it were a bit more funny, it would be a joke, but it, it's absolutely tragic. And to it, me, yeah, 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 it shows that. And uh, you know, the, the money it's costing them. Yeah, I can't see the sense in it. Yeah, well, I mean, look at people getting fines for being homeless. I mean, what the bloody hell is all that about? You're not homeless because you've got a grand to spare to pay a fine for being homeless, are you? I know. I know, making it, yeah, making it a criminal offence. You know, what's going on? And and uh, them spikes in the doorways. Yeah, well, oh, it's evil, isn't it? That will just help to get people off the streets and either into prisons or some kind of centre or something, I don't know. Keep them controllable, I suppose. It's the only reason I can see for them keep doing this sort of thing, to homeless people. And... Uh, I think as well, it, it's a bit of that old demonisation thing. I know with myself, we've been disabled. Um, when I first came out of work, because I wasn't able to work anymore, uh, I was treated fairly well by everybody I knew. But more and more as time's gone on, you get people pointing fingers and whispering and all this kind of shit, because they they... They read the newspapers, they watch the BBC, they watch ITV. And Absolutely, yeah. You know, all the world's ills are to blame on people who aren't able to work. Well, sorry, when I was working for those 20-odd years, I paid a hell of a lot of tax on national insurance. And uh, national insurance... Well, surely if any other insurance company that stole all your insurance premiums and weren't going to pay you out, there'd be some sort of prosecution over it. But apparently with this lot of scumbags, no. Yeah, yeah. It's a joke, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I spend most of my time as well. Um, it doesn't matter who it is. I mean, in, I was in a cafe the other day with a friend and there was other people in there that I didn't know them from Adam. 
and I thought to myself, this is my, this is another opportunity because I'm, I'm always at it. I always just go over to them and just basically, I said to them, um, would you believe me? What, what have I told you? That I got a tax letter the other day, um, about my tax, my tax code going up. Well, it's not my tax code, of, of course. And it had my title in capitals and it had, it had my name all in capitals. Mm-hmm. What have I told you that that isn't you or me or anyone else? And basically went into the legal fiction straw man s- scenario talk. And then I got, then I spoke to her, spoke to them about uh, Magna Carta Article 61. Then I spoke to them about the Criminal Justice and Court Act Section 26, where a, where a copper can go away for 14 years. Um, then I told them about when I dealt with me loan. Did this will resonate with Tony? <laughs> yeah, um, I took this loan out. Because uh, I know the banking system's fraudulent, and basically your signature creates the money. But it doesn't. It goes into your account out of thin air, as we all know. <coughs> anyway, uh, the, the, this firm, Everyday Lending, they're called. Everyday Lending next to Debenhams. But anyway, when I was in there, I, I could see right through them. They were so transparent. Sign this, sign that, sign this, sign that. And it went into my account out of thin air. So I sent them a... Um, Record a delivery letter. I asked them to prove the contract, send me an invoice, and validate the debt. They they failed uh, as they, as they do. So they sell it to a debt collection agency. Hmm. But I had them. At, they, they came to me door. Um, I was having a little strum on the guitar. They the, the living room had a, quite a few people in it, and uh, there was a knock on the door. And I just looked, and I, I thought, hey, where have I seen these? I know these two. Anyway, I opened the door. They said, hey, are you Mr. Mark? I said, who's asking? They went, everyday lending limited. I said, no, I'm just commonly known as Mark. They said, what's your date of birth? I said, how do I know that? I was only a baby at the time. They said, <laughs> they said right, I'm going to phone my manager. I said, before you do, I do not consent. And uh, basically, with the, the, the collector letters, I just done the uh, no contract return to sender. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, the last the last one was off because uh, I, I dealt with me um, um, O2 as well. I, I thought, no, sod you, you're not getting your money. Um, and then done the same process with them. But I've, interesting enough, I went on the uh, I've joined the uh, credit credit score site, which is free, um, and it's not even on there. A five grand loan because it, after six years it becomes statute bad. Yeah, so, so you you basically took that alleged loan out and you haven't paid anything back and it's all in the clear now. Yeah, but I I was telling people what I'd done and yeah. people were saying to me, but but you borrowed the money, but <laughs> you borrowed the money, <laughs> but yeah, uh, you know they, they just don't understand. But are you trying to explain to them? explain it to them, do you know what I mean? And that it's either going in one ear and not the other or it'll resonate with them. But mm. if they will come a time and something will bite bite give them a bite on the arse and then they'll, they'll that'll wake them up. But Absolutely. the way that I seen something on Facebook the other day, um this I saved it, I meant to show people show someone today where he, he reckons like there's there is an awakening going on. And I do myself. Um but he was he was talking more along the lines of chemtrails and things like that. <laughs> I, 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 there was a there was a lad in t- in town last Saturday um, when we when we went after the march to go and have a cup of tea in that place. Uh, there was a lad one of, one of, he was more or less with us, <coughs> and uh, there was a guy I've met loads of times. He does a lot of photography uh, during the Love Kitchen and Wake Up Liverpool events. Um, he was there, Mark Shankly. So uh, there was a conversation going on between this lad and um, Andy his name is and Mark Shankly and I was listening to the conversation and basically Andy was saying that there's no such thing as chemtrails um, Mark was looking at me as if to say 
for that it there is there is and I was I was agreeing with Mark. But I don't know where he's got his information from. <laughs> 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 you know, I really don't know where he's got his information from. The debate keeps coming up on here. There was a a ninja show about chemtrails. I think it was a couple of weeks ago, maybe on a Friday night, uh, two weeks ago. Uh, Freeman Jack, Patrick Lee, uh, Jimmy. Who else was on there? Martin. I think Martin hosted it. That's right. Yeah, two against two. Two saying, yep. Just look up, they're there. Another two saying, well, yeah, we can see that there's something there, but it's not what you're saying it is. So it was quite an interesting conversation, actually. But, yeah. Uh, no, it's Babs has posted there in the chat room, Nan, who is 92, she now questions chemtrails. Wow. So you do obviously done some good work there, Babs. Um, yeah, absolutely, yeah, Babs. Well, the ladies, well, nice, that's, a, that's a good thing to know. Yeah, yeah. At, at you've night. actually got the chat room buzzing there. There's uh, loads of people posting. We've even got Vin posting in. Um, he's got a good uh, take on the fines for homeless people. He says, if fined for being homeless, accept the fine and ask them to post it to you. Ah, oh, nice one. <laughs> yeah, um, if, if the, the people that I, I uh, met and do, do it regular every week, um, if... But if any, if, if I say I say to people, if any, if I ended up in trouble in any way or shape or form, they would be there. They would be there, without a doubt. Whether it be going to court, whether it be being arrested, whether it be, you know, anything being home, getting being homeless myself, me, uh, get, you know, if that happened to me, they'd be there for me. And that's that's what that basically that's what everyone should, everyone if you know it's good when uh, people come together when there's a uh, situ- situation like they have done with with the floods that have gone on mm-hmm. you know that, that little communities come together and that that's a good thing like but that's what I mean is if if, if something happens to you but they they be there for you. Mm. Um, I did notice something Babs posted in the chat room. She's posted some figures there from December 2014. Said there are 653,127 homes gathering dust in England, the lowest total since data began to be collected in 2004. It is shocking, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's, um, I think she said also there's there's a lot of empty properties in Liverpool. Um have have you managed to make any? Or do you know anyone who's managed to make any headway into to getting some of these empty buildings that are just gathering dust into use for homeless people? Not as yet, but I'll, I'll ask them. I'll ask tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll make it. I'll make it. Been they probably know about it already, but I'll ask. I'll ask tomorrow. But some of them uh, have been since since the bank they, they took over the bank. Some of them homeless that were in there have been rehoused. Which is a oh, which is a good thing to hear, uh, but there's still the, re- the the regulars that I see on the streets. I mean, every time I see what I saw one when I was uh, shopping, I was a bit hungry, so I went to the Pound Bakery. And uh, I know it's, I know it's, I shouldn't eat that shit, like, but <laughs> um, I went to the Pound Bakery. Got two two um, pasties, sausage pasties, and I was eating one. Uh, I come across this, this before I went there. I come across this lad. I said, have, is, "Have you got any change?" I said, "I haven't got any change on me at the moment. Give us five minutes." And then I went to the pound bank. He come back, and he was still there. And I said to him, um, have, "Do you know about the uh, love kitchen up on Saturday?" He went, "Yeah." I said, "Well, get round there on Saturday." Um, uh, yeah, the, uh, I'm backtracking here a bit. A, 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 a bit. There was a guy. Uh, they all had to go to court. All these the, when they got say, when they got given the notice to to um, they're going to be evicted out the bank. And beforehand, they went to court. I was outside the court when they were all in there. Um, I was dying to get in there, but I don't know. I don't know. I, I didn't get in there. They, they had something else going on. And uh, I was outside the court, and I, I got talking to this girl, Kathy Murray. Um, We've been friends ever since, and we've been to um, we've been to um, you know courts. We've been to 
um, an anti-fracking protest uh, off off the coast of West Kirby, uh, Hilbert Island. Um, the the girl that shouted, uh, say she calls herself Sadie Love, on yeah. on Facebook. She shouted, uh, "Cannabis cures cancer." <laughs> oh yeah, and when, when um, an, another friend of mine who was from the bank uh, was getting arrested. If uh, she was shouting bullies, bullies, <laughs> but she was hilarious. Honestly, God, she she doesn't fear nothing, which is a good thing. But yeah, um, I'm looking forward to tomorrow actually, and I will, I will, and I will find out and get back to you on that one. But it's yeah. it's glad to hear that uh, some of them got rehomed. Yeah, yeah, that's absolutely fantastic news. Um, Babs is saying they want to frack in West Kirby. Uh, that's the yeah. place where the old bird's eye factory was, wasn't it? Yeah, um, and uh, I've seen the news today that they, they, uh, they gave the go-ahead for it more, even more to go on. In, in Cheshire. Cheshire yeah. and around the boats. Well, we had a, a quite a strange experience with fracking. Um, we're over on the East Coast, uh, a little place called Boston, and uh, we had a talk for uh, Elon Crane came over. He was on his way home from somewhere else, did a couple of hours one evening. There was the mayor there and there was either three or four town councillors. And they were absolutely up in arms when they saw this talk from in our crane because it's mainly an agricultural area here. In fact, they grow a lot of cabbages, brassicas, um, salad stuff, all that kind of thing. And the area is heavily dependent on, on agriculture. So the, the mayor said, oh, we need to stop this. Um, it's going to destroy our economy. Um, so one of the members of the group called the mayor, um, I think it was about two weeks later, and said, uh, what are you going to do to stop fracking? And he said, I don't know anything about fracking. Interesting. <laughs> yes, and he was the Labour candidate at the next general election, so uh, you kind of could see what probably went on there, whether, whether it was a brown envelope or somebody twisting the screws slightly over something there. I don't know, we don't know, but... He's certainly been got to one way or another. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, we'd have to let our MPs know about the fact that, um, you know, show them the footage of this this American lady in her kitchen. Fracking's going on around the, the area where she lives. She runs the tap, lights the, the lighter, and the, the, the water's flames are coming from the water. Yeah, I've seen that. I've seen mm. that in Australia as well. Um, there's yeah. whole areas of massive areas of the countryside being decimated over there. Um, and I mean, but we're only a tiny country, really, in the UK, aren't we? Um, so, what the hell it's going to do to us here? I don't know. Um, yeah, time will tell. But there's a there's a group of us in a they're looking to frack in Upton. Uh, and there's a group of us up there now barricaded themselves. They've been served an eviction notice. They wait for the bailiffs. The bailiffs haven't turned up as yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it, they've barricaded themselves, so it's going to be. They've even dug underground. So it's it's going to be an interesting scenario where that's concerned. It's, there's quite a few of them. Do you, do you regularly have uh, helicopters? You know, do you police helicopter all over them? Uh, they've they've got someone on what on watch twenty four hours a day on the entrance. Um, but yeah, they're doing a fantastic job. But it's getting up there, and it, 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 it's very muddy, really muddy. But um, yeah. yeah, they're doing a fantastic job up there, and, and there's probably going to be even more protests, anti fracking protests going on with because of all of these licenses that have been passed. And who's this George Osborne, Gideon, the cokehead? Mm. You know, honest to God, government, mind control. Yeah, well, that's what the word government means, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Govern is to control, meant for mental. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. 
this is uh, off off the topic. I was in the bank the other day, uh, and I always have a lovely conversation with the bank staff. They're like, what? <laughs> yeah, because I, t- I, t- I basically tell them about money, and there's nothing to back it up, and uh, it's worthless pieces of paper. But we're just we just perceive it as being you know worth money, but it isn't. At the end of the day, it's nothing to back it up, and. Uh, I basically told them about the, the word mortgage is a death pledge. Mm. Um, they, they, they were quite like surprised, but they, they don't like me. I, I regularly have these chats with them <laughs> every time I'm in the bank, which is which is quite a regular thing. But every time I go in there, they, 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 oh god, here's him again. <laughs> um, yeah, it, but like I thought, I was going to bloody say now. Yeah, I'll, I'll uh, see if there's another m- march going on. But if, I don't, I'm not sure whether, they, they, like, I heard last week that they were going to do it again. It's going to be a weekly thing. But I'll just see. I'll just see what's going on. And um, But I'll be spending more time. I'll find out what time it is, who's going. But I'll be spending most of my time. Um, I'll help, help them set up. Um, see what's on the menu. Gather, gather them round. Go looking for them. Because you do see a lot of them like sitting around. I mean, someone said to me the other day, they called into a friend of mine. I, I was sitting with, I was in her house and there was a knock and she came in for a chat to her. I um, basically told them, I told her about what we do for the homeless. And she said, which was, which was I found really good, her and a friend and her daughter um, got loads of stuff, toothbrushes, socks, gloves, you name it, all in a bag, went down to town at uh, 6 o'clock the other day in the evening, gave it to some homeless people. But the, the little girl said, Mummy, that's, that's the best, ta- best time out I've ever had. And I thought, that's amazing. <laughs> wow. You know, and R- Ricky Hatton, I mean, it, it's probably to do with, uh, I think, the two Ma- Manchester United players, Ex Man United players who have um, let them stay in this building that they've de- de- own over the winter winter period. Um, and over the winter period, I forget the names of them now. Was it Gary but, Neville? Was one of them? Oh yeah, Gary Neville. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and uh, Ricky. I saw Ricky Hatton. Ricky Hatton doing the same thing. And that was on the news the other night, and I thought Ricky's the man. Good on you. He's one of us. Fantastic. Abs- absolutely g- great to hear, you know. Well, they, start, they start a trend between them. What did you say, sorry? They start, they start a trend between them, a trend of people with plenty of money doing some good things, setting their yeah, example. Yeah, yeah, it's good to hear, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a bit of a shame, really, that we've got to come to that, though, that we've got to rely on these people to help out the homeless I mean we shouldn't really be in that situation in the first place should we it's like you know we, we need to prevent this from happening and get people off the streets don't we I don't know. yeah yeah I don't know whether well, there's Tony, it, it's about time um, these very rich people who keep telling us to dig in at our pockets for charity stuck their own bloody hands in their pockets and started doing some good with the millions if not billions they've got floating around I mean who was it? Elton John got ripped off for seven million by his account and didn't even notice. Yeah, um, what, he'd have been better off giving that seven million to the homeless, wouldn't he? Yeah, it's sick, man. When you hear about all them sort of things, and you know that there is so much money out there, and so few people are willing to do anything really good with it. I mean, there's a lot of people out there that take on causes and that, and it's a bit, a bit, bit of publicity with a lot of them. But uh, I know there are genuine ones out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just checking that Facebook um, thing you you posted. So, yeah, that's that's uh, the Irish girl Tanya. Tanya Lavat, your name is. Uh, let's see the photos. The the photos is Anthony with the hat on. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Let's have a look. Oh, so I did post the right link then. Yeah, very, very good. Uh, some good photos there. Yeah, it's brilliant. Okay, nice one. Yeah, that's brilliant, that. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't had a chance to look through it properly yet, but uh, I will do. I'll be sharing right, that about. Look 
through the. I, I didn't find the website like Tony has done. I just found the Love Kitchen Facebook page, and there's some really uh, heartwarming photographs on there. Yeah, it's, 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 it's really good, you know. It's absolute brilliant. I mean, I'm sure, quite sure that they do it in Manchester. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure that it, I don't know whether it gets on a regular basis, you know, but we have it on a regular basis every Saturday without fail. Whether right. it be rain, snow, we, not that we get it, but I, I don't, we, we don't. Um, whether it, it doesn't matter what weather it is, we're there. But it's it, it's not good for it's not good for me because um, I I can get down there when I can. It's just that I'm off for two weeks. Or if I get a, if I get a Saturday off, it's brilliant. I'm down there. But um, it's it, the, our manager. She's a she's unbelievable. She I find myself in every weekend. I do and like I've been moaning about it and that, but I was surprised to get this two these two weeks holidays. But it was made up because, like, it's getting down there, you know. Yeah, it so must... I get get down there as much as I can. Uh huh. Hey. So, sorry, go ahead, Tony. I was wondering how you're doing for volunteers. Do you need more? Are you well staffed there? Um. Well, we we end, we just basically enlighten enlighten people who are interested in what we're doing. Like some of them come over to us and. Um, like others have turned up that I've met through the others that are there. Um, I've introduced myself and that and whatnot, and people come over and just they're really interested in what we're doing and they are made up for us. Uh-huh. Awesome. Yeah, and some of them um, like even like dig deep and give us give us a donation, but they, and they say like it's really good what you're doing. Excellent. Good on good on yous. Yeah, it's brilliant. But uh, they're really fantastic people, they really are. And some of the regulars, you know, some of the regular homeless that you meet, they're just as wonderful. And it's, it's a damn shame what, what the establishments do, you know, coming down on them, you know. Yeah. Well, well something uh, that's just occurred to me, I mean, there's going to be a lot of people going out. Um, I know everybody's feeling the pinch at the minute, but people... The, most people spend absolutely loads at Christmas um, and a lot of it's stuff that gets put in the cupboard never seen again you know people get bought presents that they don't really want or need it's just I've got to buy a present and something I've found throughout my life is it's it's great to receive gifts but yeah, yeah. it's absolutely fantastic to see the look on a stranger's face when you give them something they're not expecting. Absolutely, yeah. Down yeah. the look. And yeah, you, you never get half as much pleasure from uh, giving gifts to, to people you know as you do to a complete stranger. I mean, to me, that that's what life's all about. You know, what goes around comes around. And absolutely. If you do the right thing because it's the right thing to do and not because you expect to get some kind of reward, there seems to be some sort of universal law that the universe comes and pays you back. Absolutely, uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, since I started doing this, um, I'm just overwhelmed with the kindness of so many people. And um, I've had some remarkable things done this last couple of weeks and some um, very kind donations. Um, I don't want to mention people's names because I don't want to embarrass them, but to all the people who've helped me out, thank you very much. Yeah, good on them. <laughs> I mean, we're just about getting the word out. Um, so often you see people's uh, radio hosts, you know, it's all about them and how clever they are and, and how much they've done and how wonderful they are, but but really, uh, I think Enemy Within is is more about the guests than about me, Tom, Tony, and whoever else helps out with the hosting, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, oh, it's it's, it's just it's it's amazing what people like all these all you guys on on the uh, People's Internet Radio, fantastic, fantastic people, and. I got myself. I had to get myself a T-shirt printed with it on the People's Internet Radio dot com secret solutions. We had all solved, and I had to get one of them. 
no, uh, no, no. <laughs> get, we're getting some. So yeah. I, I think Vin's on it. I think they're, they're coming soon. I'll, I'll tie it. Excellent. Yeah, that's, that's good. It's good to hear. So they're, they're, did you say, Dan Tony, that they're getting their own t-shirts? The, yeah, I think so. I think it's, Fan- in, it's in the pipeline. Fantastic. Yep. Excellent. Yeah, I, I took it upon myself to also to uh, get myself a... Um, went into Primark for a white t-shirt. Um, went up to the print shop. Uh, I got one... Pardon me, Laurie, in the chat box. I, I, I got... One printed F U C K the government. Uh, the other one's got the government is corrupt. The banks are fraudulent. Wore them with pride, but the other one like uh, I, I was thinking, damn no. But with the you know, kids, I only wore that. I only wore that a uh, tw- couple of times. Mm-hmm. But like I've mostly got the people since that radio one. On. Oh, <laughs> thanks for the advertising. I know oh, I did. I, I got one that I wear quite often. Uh, don't steal the government hates competition. Yeah, uh, I've got I've got a cup that <laughs> says that. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I, that's cool. me, that's the cup I drink him with. Oh wow! <laughs> well um, I also bought one that says uh, it's got the NHS logo on it, and it says NHS killing people since 1948. But you've got to be a bit careful where you wear that one because you get quite a bit of hostility with that sometimes. Yeah, well, funny you should say that because um, basic my, my my what I do for a living is um, I work looking after the old with dementia and that, and I've done it since the age of 21. Mm-hmm. Uh, in all different places, but the, this place I'm in now, I've been here six, six, nearly 17 years now. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm looking for a change, to be honest. Mm-hmm. But anyway, yeah, uh, no, it's doing the same thing, like, but there's been a couple of times when um, nurses or district nurses or whoever have, like, turned up from, from the outside, like, mm-hmm. and I've took it upon myself just to, you know, put a little bee in their bonnet and basically uh, I've always been like pulled up by the manager did you say this to her what are you doing saying this to her blah 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 and I thought what <laughs> you know I, 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 do you see what I mean um, they've, they've turned up to see her uh, check a patient so they don't want to be hearing this, this information it's happened a few times yeah. Um, and I like got stick off the manager. Oh, right. so, I know. <laughs> I know. Babs posted a link to an article there, and she said, "This is a start. French supermarkets are now no longer allowed to throw away unsold food." How sad is that? Shit, cheers, Babs, for that. No, How no. sad is that? No, that's no, good, isn't it? They're no yeah, they're longer not, allowed not to, do it. to throw it away anymore. Oh. I've read it, read it wrong, or I've heard you wrong. Yeah. Night. Babs also bloody said well, earlier. Bloody hell. Nice one for that, Babs. Bloody hell. She said earlier that she read somewhere that they was going to be making it illegal in the UK to for supermarkets to throw it out. So and she was asking, has anybody else read anything or heard anything about that? No, I haven't. I'll, I'll ask them tomorrow. Well. Mm. You know, that sort of waste ought to be criminal, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah, you're right there, but Babs, that's a start. Bloody hell. Fancy that. Yeah, it'll be, no, let's just see if it happens over here then. But I'll, I'll ask them tomorrow. Have they heard anything? It's really interesting. Not that interesting. Nice one. Mm-hmm. Ah, it, yeah, Laurie's added to that. The proposal in its current form will only affect super and hypermarkets with a sales area of more than 400 square metres. The retailers are required by law to engage in measures to reduce waste and to cooperate with all organisations to donate the food. Alternatively, they can also give the food to producers of animal food or compost. Right. Hmm. Uh, it'd be interesting to see what ones they choose then. <laughs> yeah, cheers for that, Loz. Bloody hell. Um, 
what was I going to say? I was going to say something else. Uh, yeah, th- th- this is. Uh, there was a council meeting. Um, s- pay- Page Moss council meeting um, regarding they're going to supposed to be building on this particular green patch. Um, and and the, the, like Amanda was there, uh, Cathy Murray was there. Um, brilliant, brilliant people. And this fella got up and t- to give to ask a question, and we're basically told you can't ask a question, you can't say you can't say nothing. And like he was saying, I, I can say anything I want. This is a free country. Um, it made them all. It made them all walk out, and when they were walking out, they were getting stick off uh, Amanda and um, Amanda and oh, fucking how many my heads going here? My brain cells have gone. <laughs> yeah, they were getting stick, and the, the police turned up. Oh, couldn't, couldn't believe it. The police turned up, so uh, I, I made a comment to Cathy. I made the comment to Cathy on Facebook, and she said, uh, "Are you coming to the next one?" And I said, but, "Yeah, defo." Defo, I find I, I find myself um, educating the uh, the old bill as well. This is something I've done. Um, I went to I went, last not last November the fifth. It was the, the year before. Uh, an, an anonymous V for Vendetta uh, march mm-hmm. where we all had masks on, and we all met outside the the, the, uh, the courts, and we just walk around town with placards with God, everything that they need to, we need to wake the masses up you know anything that's I had mine about the, the legal name and all that but the one last last year's last November's um, I had this placard about the legal name just, um, and I was on my way home it, was, it wasn't that, wasn't as good as last year's and I was on, we were getting tailed by old Bill I was on my way home. Um, come ac- we come across these drummers first. Brilliant. Absolutely fantastic. And then when I made a, my way to the bus stop, I seen this uh, police van. And I still had my placard out regarding the name. And chemtrail chem information on the back. Um, while, while I wasn't, while I was in town, I was, I had that placard up. People like were going past it, having a good look at it. Some Australian girl who'd, who'd come over uh, to come to, to this country for a, a break. She was she got onto it. Uh, people were taking photographs, but I come across this uh, on the way home. I come across this police van, <laughs> and there was four of them in there in the police van. So I, I put the uh, placard on the windscreen, <laughs> <laughs> and they were looking at it like, "What's what's this he's putting?" You know, and they turned it over to read the, the other side. And this taxi driver, <laughs> this taxi driver said, "You're off your head, you." <laughs> yeah, that was funny. It was pretty big coming from a taxi driver. The, the looks on their faces. Yeah, I've just noticed Laurie's posted in the chat room. Um, she likes how little do it. Um, they put the going out of date food at the window for people to take for free. So that's a good start. Um, Babs is saying cake shops yeah, on sat- used to give cakes away, but because of health and safety, they have to stop and th- throw it all out. That's, that's good on you, little. Mm. I, I tell you, here's something I heard. Um, the Aldi in Smithdown Road, I think it was t- it was on the telly, the mm-hmm. tele live vision. The, the Aldi... There's, there's certain foods that haven't even got a sell-by date on, on them. Uh, you know, so why would you work that out? And they, had, they also had uh, obstacles in the way of the fire doors. But some of the some most of the foods didn't have uh, sell-by dates on them. Oh wow! That's, yeah, that's a bit odd, but uh, that's that's really good to hear regarding their uh, little nice, nice, good one, nice one for to them, like. Oh, you set Lee off now. He says, ha, 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 a free country. Oh, boy, that's funny. <laughs> he says, yeah, it's free if you're a <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm just going to, I'll be just two minutes. Shall we have some churns? We've got a couple yeah, lined up here. Yeah, that's a good idea. Time for a brew. Five and a uh, half minutes. All right, then I'll be two minutes. 
Righto. Cheers. Five and a half minutes of change we've got, people. See you on the other side of these. All right, bud. Good evening. Welcome back to Enemy Within on this lovely Friday night, the 18th of December, um, with Tony Hurst and Mark Cox from the Love Kitchen Liverpool. Just before we go any further, I'd just like to say stay tuned for Martin Farrell at 9 o'clock. I'm not quite sure who Martin's got on because when I tried to PM him, he disappeared off the chat. But um, I did have a word with Lee and Lee's on at 11 o'clock tonight and he's going to be delving into what the scientists know about vitamin C as a pharmaceutical pharmaceutical drug therapy for cancer. So many studies to look at too. Uh, should be a lighter dark side tonight, so I look forward to that one. Uh, I might not be able to catch it all because I'll be recording for Alison. Um, she's got uh, Suzanne Hansen on tomorrow on Lady X Files, which is quite a coincidence because Suzanne was also on the Amash Files this week. So... And and then after Lee, we've got listeners' tunes with Tony Hurst, whoever he is. Uh, uh, who got on tonight, Tony? Well, uh, artist formerly known as Graham is supposed to be on, but I'm not sure what's happening to him. I've not spoke to him all week, and as far as I know, he's still not got his Skype connected. So I'm not sure. But if worst comes to the worst, then everybody who's about will be donating tunes, I suppose, and we'll be playing them. Listeners' terms, isn't it? Sounds like a plan, mate. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I think it's great we've got Mark on tonight because we know he's a regular listener, and um, so many people that that regularly visit the chat room are doing so much good out there. Um, if there's any more of you who'd like to come on and talk about what you're doing, um, you know who you are. Um, message me, and uh, we'll set something up. But Mark. Yeah, I'm back on now, folks. Okay, mate. Um, so, uh, have you got any plans for the future going forward of, of how you're going to kind of broaden out what you do, or uh, are you di- diversifying or sticking to what you're good at? Um, for the time being, we're just going to stick to what we're doing. Mm-hmm. Um, so, th- th- I don't think they'll stop. They'll just carry on and carry on and carry on, and we'll just enlighten uh, the shoppers. Um, and we'll regularly post things on Facebook uh, regarding people setting them up. No doubt they've set, no doubt of they're doing the same in other cities, but we'll just keep on doing that. Well, a couple of weeks back we had Barry and Sarah on who are doing a similar thing in Doncaster. Um, yeah. They're now setting up a, a hostel for. Um, I'm sure. I'm sure it'll spread. Yeah. Yeah. It should. It should do. Um, there's, I mean, it shouldn't stop because it, it it shouldn't like just be over Christmas. You know, it should be regular all year round. Because the amount of homeless homelessness is, is increased significantly in this in this country, and it's down to bedroom tax. It's, it's down to evictions. It's down to you know people who have, who have hit hard times. And, you know, it could be it could happen to anyone. You know. But there, there's, there, there is there is an awakening going on worldwide, without a doubt. That's what I that's what I believe. Yeah, I think they say that most people are only three paychecks away from the streets. So it's a knife edge existence when you've got mortgages and so many overheads and everything relies on your job. It's a knife edge yeah. existence. Isn't it? There's, there's no other way of looking at it, and you can't look down on people who went one way, it's not their fault in many, many cases. Absolutely, it's not, absolutely. Yeah, no bearing on them at all. They've worked all their lives and done everything they can and companies fold and, you know, things change and that's it. They've got, they're got they on the streets because of the way that we form our societies around these huge, great big debts. There's, there's no uh, sand. People are building their houses on sand, really, when they come to these big mortgages when it's on a job. Instead of yeah. a stone foundation. Absolutely, I mean it's great. It, it's absolutely this this radio station is fantastic for uh, you know le- learning people's stuff and you know the official offer is keeping them in the, the homes as well, which is which is brilliant. Gotta say, hats off, hats off to you guys. Yep. 
All the research is fantastic. Yeah, those oh. that are doing the work behind the scenes there, and that, they're doing really well. Helping yeah. out a lot of people. I'm yeah, just, I've, just, I've just seen Keno's, Keno's post. It's fraud, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. It's, uh, well, to me, it's immoral the whole way that we see houses as a way of making money. You know, and people think if you've got an house, this is great, we'll buy that and then we'll get another house if we can and we'll rent that out and we'll get a buy to let only mortgage or whatever. And they've got, they've got all these schemes coming up to make themselves bankers and yet most of them ain't got too much good to say about bankers. And I've got a real problem with people thinking that it's a good thing making money on your own and yet making it harder and harder for your kids and your grandchildren to ever have an home. I mean, it, there's got there's a massive conflict of interest, isn't there, really, in it all? Yeah, yeah. I've, I've just clicked on that article that Babs has posted in the um, in the chat room there, and what a headline! Uh, stupidity is max. I think she said, "Universal credit claimant has benefits stopped whilst waiting to start work at the DWP." A man. Claiming the new universal credit had his benefits sanctioned for failing to look for work despite waiting to start a new job at the Department of Work and Pensions. I mean, you couldn't make this shit up. No, it's got to be made up. <laughs> I know, I know. I'll tell you something I've done with, um, uh, I got, yeah, I used to get work and tax credit. Oh, yeah. And, um, they, like, it's happened to, I keep, I keep saying to people who, who also get it, uh, they've been over. They've been saying they've overpaid me, and I said, "It's funny you should say that. It's happened to me." And I was on my way to a um, Stockport at the time with uh, this Irish lad, and um, it, we had this. We had these meetings in the pubs in, in a pub. Uh, people got up and done talks and whatnot. And we used to share share knowledge with each other and that. I, I said to him, I had got this letter off the work and tax credit saying they've overpaid me 500 and, f- 500 and something pound it was. And I thought, so sod you, you're not getting that. So what I'd done with it, uh, I accepted it, I accepted it for value and sent it back to him. Basically what I'd done, what my understanding of it is, I, cu- I cut out, I, I put the, cut the original, um, payment slip. Off, uh, photocopied it, attached the the original photocopy to the photocopied one. Um, I wrote on it, assessed an acceptable value of settlement and closure above the account in accordance with the Uniform Commercial Code. I forget the uh, the numbers after that. Um, I signed it, put my national insurance number, turned it over, signed the back to endorse it on each of them, and then sent it to the the commercial bank, which was on the uh, actual sh- whatever, a check, what a shitty, whatever it's called. But they claimed that they, cl- I didn't earn anything else, anything else after that. So it proves the acceptance of value works. Mm-hmm. Well, we, technically it does work, yeah. But w- what um, a lot of people that I talk to are finding is that when they go in the, the courtroom with whether it's accepted for value bills of exchange, um, whatever, it doesn't matter how correct you are legally, the judges will railroad you and they'll oh, just yeah. stop the Oh, yeah, without a doubt. Mm. Yeah, this yeah. is happening more and more with all sorts of things, isn't it? You know, they're being pushed right into corners now by clever people in many different areas and the response seems to be universal. Once they run out of delaying tactics, then they just railroad you because there's nothing left else to do. Well, we saw that happening with um, Claire Knowles in Dublin, didn't we, earlier in the week? Yeah. I mean, funny enough, um, I haven't managed to catch up on the latest of that. Last I heard was uh, she had to go back to prison if she didn't um, uh, give her home up. Um, do you know what happened there, Tony? I haven't had an update yet. I don't know that anyone's done one. I'm not sure. Ah, right. No. Nope. I was just being away. I thought I'd missed something. I scrolled through the uh, million and one messages in the PIR host room, but I didn't see anything there. Okay, well, I know she didn't go back to prison. 
But I don't know the stuff. details on how it all got sorted out and uh, there was a bit of information from Vin, I think it was last night, maybe the night before now, I don't know, time goes so fast, where people had been advising her or had asked, had asked to be clearing out her furniture and that from the home and Vin was saying that that's probably not a good thing because it's like you're giving up your dwelling but no one really knew at the last time that I heard the full details of what was going on there. Oh, I see, yeah. Oh, and that that that, uh, blah, blah, blah. that link that I just mentioned that Babs posted, Lee says it reveals how the DWP is automated to the point of ridiculousness, and the people who work there are morons. That's what it shows. Uh, yeah, well said, well said. Yeah, Ken adds to that. He says, since I left in 2000, you're right, Lee, I could tell you some stories. I, I've, I've met Ken quite a few times now going to meet him again uh, soon into the new year and Ken used to work running the computer systems for the DWP and the stories he's tell you like what you can't believe it you know the people yeah. um, sat there twiddling the thumbs doing nothing waiting for a technician to come and if you just kind of look round the back there's a wire unplugged you plug the wire back in it all works again oh can't do that it's not my job <laughs> yeah, um, I was wonder- I'm just wondering. Um, could anyone could anyone post a link of um, the interview with General Goodshafton that was done on PIR? Because uh, I want- I'm just wondering if if, it- if his acceptable value worked. Because of- <laughs> yeah, who, who show was that on? Do you know? G- General Goodshafton. Yeah, but whose show was he on? Um, someone mentioned to me that him and the anti-terrorist are both the same people. Oh right. Yeah. yeah um, this was a this was a girl I met at one of the free freedom meetings I went to in Stockport. She she's a uh, she's from Liverpool, but she she said to me that uh, General Goodshafton and the anti-terrorist are both the same people. I wouldn't know. I don't know either of them. So. Yeah, if you check them out on um, YouTube, just type in the anti-terrorist. He wears a, um, a balaclava and sunglasses, and he te- teaches you uh, how to behave in court. Um, but it's not it's not the same as uh, PIRs, you know. Um, and also, General Goodshafton is like a little uh, <coughs> um, some kind of a mask, a model mask. With, with the mouth moves, talking about how he's going to accept the value in the court because they, 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 they think the court they're going to take his car off him or something like that. <laughs> he's fu- he's fun to, but funny to listen to. Gen- General Goodshafton's all one word, mm-hmm. um, and the uh, anti-terrorist as well. Interesting. Yeah. I'll check that out at some point. Yeah, yeah it, it's, it's he's he's really funny to listen to. Mm-hmm. Nice one. Cheers for the heads up. Uh, I'm going to change the subject because I was just thinking about Pat and wanted to wish Pat Valden well. He's not been too well and I hope that he's uh, home soon. I thought I'd put that in there now. Yeah, that's great, mate. Yeah, um, it, yeah it'd be nice to get an update on Pat and I uh, hope you get well soon, Pat. It'd be nice to hear you back on the air when you're fit and well again, mate. Sure. And on the subject to that, I'd like to uh, wish all the best to uh, Jason, Jason Holmes as well. Um, we popped over to see Jason Wednesday, and uh, he's in good spirits. Um, not quite his usual bouncy self, but uh, I'm sure he'll get there in the end. I know he's been listening earlier on. I don't know if he's still logged in. Yeah, he's not been had a lot of good luck lately, has he, Jason? He's had a lot of luck, none of it good. Well, if it weren't for bad luck, he wouldn't have any at all, would he? Yeah, incredible. But, uh, no, he's an amazing guy. He does a lot of great work with his filmmaking. And I know he's been a big help with Bernie, who's been on with us a couple of times. And um, him and Frags are making a, a great film with Bernie. I think that's really going to blow a few people's minds when it comes out. Uh-huh. Yeah, I've seen some of that already. Yeah. I, I was also supposed to um, have a bit of soundtrack that was hopefully going to be able to play or a video tonight from Mickey Summers because um, 
uh, uh, it's along similar lines to what we've been talking about. They went over there to candlelit vigil um, outside the offices of the city council in Nottingham the other night, and they actually got what happened. I think it was some enforcement officer or something who works for the council, but who was actually wearing a police uniform, so I think that's committing a crime as far as I'm aware. He actually went into the nearest fast food shop and got some trays full of water and went outside and threw the water all over his candles while people were having this vigil. Now, if that isn't disgusting behaviour, I don't know what is. Did they video that? Yeah, it's on video. Mickey was supposed to be sending me the video, but I don't know what's happened. I haven't got it yet. So, how, how is Mickey? Mickey, always oh, full of full of beans, and uh, he asked me to say a big thank you to everyone on PIR who helped out with his crowdfunder to get him home for Christmas with his wife, and he's flying out on Sunday, so he's going to have a layover in Chicago, meet an old mate who he hasn't seen for thirty years. And then he's up to see Lorraine in Rochester, New York, and he'll be back over here in the new year. And uh, Nottingham City Council and um, all the lying scumbags who are trying to fix, fit him up, they want to watch out because he means business. Yeah, outstanding work he does. Oh, he's just an amazing guy. <laughs> every every time I talk to him, he, he just inspires me. You know, He's got no fear. Um, yeah, well, well into him. Yeah, he, I mean, he's, he's, he's been down some dark roads. Um, he talked about his addiction and the, the, the criminal things he's got involved in in the past. But now he's here, he's cleaned up his act and he's fighting for justice and uh, more power to that man's elbow. Absolutely, yeah. 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 Some, some year he's had, Mickey. <laughs> he's done some work and he deserves a rest. Hopefully he'll get a chance to recharge his batteries. I know he'll be back at... Uh, like the bully is. <laughs> well, yeah, he didn't be that much because he's uh, coming on and doing the show with us on Tuesday. So he was actually going to do one on Christmas Day, but uh, we, we rescheduled that. Uh-huh. Try and I'll, I'll look forward to that. Yeah. Yeah, we've got something pretty good lined up for Tuesday. So, yeah, look out for that one, folks. Nice one. Yeah. Nice one, lads. Yeah, it was a question I... I uh, People who are on my wavelength uh, ask me is what what woke me up. Um, it wasn't so much nine eleven; it was um, YouTube. Yeah, yeah, YouTube. It was YouTube that woke me up because I stumbled upon. This is how it happened for me. I stumbled upon. I still can't find his other video. Um, this guy in Manchester, not, not Manchester, but it's Birmingham. He's in Birmingham, and he's filming the police from his his doorway mm-hmm. um, and they're pulling the, this lad up on a bike and they look in his direction as he's filming them and he comes he's got a big camera yeah, it's not on his phone he's got this big camera and he comes over to them he comes over to him and says basically uh, you can't film us he says I'm sorry I film the police all the time I can't film you it's against the law you can't film us he said I'm sorry but the the, the by law, I'm, I'm acting by law. There, there, there is no law that says I can't film you. Anyway, he gets on the radio to his inspector. Isn't it, uh, the, the camera picks um, the inspector up, up saying, um, you know, there is no law, that, that you can't film you. And then he says to them, the, the, the camp, to the girl, because there's a fella and a girl copper. The girl coppers always seems to be the worst ones. <clears throat> well, if she proved it, because... Um, he he said the cameras picked up, picked this up better than your ears. <laughs> Hang on a minute. <laughs> yeah, he said the cameras picked that better up than your ears. And I, I, I said uh, he, he said uh, well, basically he argued with them a little bit. He said, "What what did you say to that officer?" And then the two of them, he said, "I don't, don't want to argue, but yeah, I haven't done nothing." Blah blah. And the two of them walk away, and then that led on to uh, John Harris. Rob Menard, and that was it then for me. I'm really glad you brought that up, uh, Mark, because uh, one of the things that Mickey uh, mentioned to me last night when we were over at his place, and I was supposed to look it up, and I'd forgotten until just now, was um, a section of a particular act that uh, covers that activity, 
and it's section 36 of the Data Protection Act, and it says, domestic purposes, personal data processed by an individual only for the purpose of that individual's personal, family, or household affairs, including recreational purposes, are exempt from data protection principles and the provisions of parts one, parts two and three. So what that really means is if, if you're recording the police and it's for your own personal use, uh, even for your own protection, then there's nothing they can do about it. So um, I'll post that link in the chat room. Yeah, nice one. And thanks for that information, Mickey. Yeah, and thanks I've, for reminding me, Mark. I've actually <laughs> got, I've got a document here somewhere written by the uh, top copper in the Metropolitan Police and was sent out to them all about the laws and that and where they stand and I got it from a photography site to download and take out with me because they pull these scams with people all the time you know when you're out with a camera in the city or anywhere else nowadays you've seen it all yourselves so I'm, I'm trying to find it here I've just booted up my server but I'll dig it out and I'll post that as well when I've found it so that if people take that out with them it's straight from the horse's mouth you know yeah I've, I've got a um... I've got a little booklet. Uh, I, don't, I can't remember what it's called now. It's just there. Hang on a minute, folks. What's happened? Is it, have we lost everyone? Yeah, I'm still here, mate. Okay. All right, Mark's just... going to find his booklet. I thought we'd lost the stream. No, I just gave Mark a minute. I thought he was going to be straight back with his book, but... Uh... Right on. He'll be back in a second or two. Found it. Here we go. It's uh, so they so they say you've broken the law, challenging legal authority, and it's by the lioness. She calls herself the lioness. Sarah Lioness. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's uh, interesting. I've been sp spreading the word about that as well. In the past. Uh -huh. and where do you get this book from then, Mark? Is it available online or is it something you have to find at a bookshop? Um, if you check out Sarah Lioness, mm -hmm. uh, let me see. It doesn't really say. No, it doesn't really say where it's come from. Mm -hmm. Hang on a minute. Princes in great you check it out on Amazon. It's on Amazon.co.uk and it's so they say you've broken the law and it's Sarah Lioness. Oh, nice one, mate. I'll uh, I'll look that one up and uh, see if we can find a link to pop in the chat room. Yeah, yeah. Um please don't don't worry me. Uh you know how to deal with them. It's quite easy, you know, but there's people there that just spill the beans to them, left, right and centre, saying all kinds to them. That's the big mistake you make. They say no comp, uh, you're not obliged to say anything, you know, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you have the right to remain silent. Well, they tell you, Shh, don't say nothing. <laughs> Isn't it? Yeah. Don't say a word. Yeah, and um, they also tell you what you do say, they're going to use it against you, so... Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Let me just let me just find a page on here. I'll oh, tell you the uh, table of contents. Uh, I am freeborn, just like you. Page seven. Proof of claim. Page eleven. Proof of authority. Page fifteen. How to consent? How consent is gained? Page seventeen. Well, we all know that. Who has genuine authority? 23. The social contract? 27. The vital difference? Um, 29. And examples to use? 20, 33. Letter to claimant? 33. Um, do you plead guilty or not guilty? Can't say a thing. Yeah. 36. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? 37. And definitions. Yeah, it's, it's, this is the type of book that you carry around with you. Um, 
if you know come into contact with these goons in uniform. Hmm. I'm just looking at. Um, I can't find anything by Sarah Lioness on uh, on Amazon.co.uk. No. Hey, what about the uh, what's what are the other um, sites? What, what's the title of the book there again, please, Mark? So they say you've broken the law, challenging legal authority. So you've broken the law, ah, in all departments. There we go. By the lioness, that's it. Have you, have you found it? Found it, yeah. I'll pop a link in the uh, chat room when it comes up. What did Sarah do? She done. Uh, she wrote a letter to a chief constable in her area, I believe, uh, what, and exempted herself from all the statutes and acts and put up some sign on her window. I can't really remember now. It's a couple of years or more ago since I was listening, listening to her a bit. But I know she's done some pretty interesting stuff. I don't know where it all worked out for her. Do you keep up with her, Mark, what she does? Um, I've got I've got lots of other um, books. She used to be on Torquay Radio, I think, uh, the same same uh, station that uh, Lou Collins was on for a while. I don't know. Yeah, I'm sure she was. Yeah. I'll put the Amazon link in there in the chat room. No, nice one, Andy. Oh, and somebody Jeff's put um, a PDF download to challenging legal authority. I'm not sure if that's the same one. Ah, that looks like it's the same thing, yes. Hang on, let's have a look. Oh, it's... Yeah, that, that's it, yeah. 12 pages, yeah. Yeah, that's it. Nice one. Thanks for that, Jeff. Cheers, Jeff, yeah, nice. Brilliant chat room, always on the case. And I did mention earlier we've got Martin Farrell coming up at 9 o'clock. I wasn't sure what Martin had got on, but Martin's PM'd me. And tonight he's covering Wi-Fi smart meters fluoride with Walter Graham. So uh, that was, that'll be a, that'll be a good show. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, something we all need to take note of. I know we um, got quite a bit of information about the Wi-Fi and smart meters off uh, Barry Trowell when he was on the other week. Um, been trying to get hold of him today actually because we're trying to line him up to do a show with our Sarah and uh, in January and uh, cover the damage that microwaves cause to mitochondrial DNA, which uh, should be a fascinating one. Hang on, Paul's just posted something there. Uh, four shares. I wonder if I can write that link down. All right. My chat ain't been scrolling for I don't know how long, so I've missed a load of people joining. I thought it had gone quiet. <laughs> it's all right. I've got that. I'll put it in the... Um, I'll put it in the Skype room for you. Mark. Oh, n- oh, nice one. Yeah, it'll save me writing it down. There you go, mate. Yeah, I, I enjoyed his show regarding the um, where you set set cards out, playing cards. Um, the ace is, is like always first, then there's the one, the two, the three, mm-hmm. and then the last one's the king. But I'm sorry, it's the other way around. The ace is high, and right. um, that's where we, that's where we are. Mm. Oh, and just Sean McGuire just posted his first out of the bag ever was with Walter, so uh, be nice to get him back on. Yeah, he's a, he's a good good guy to listen to. Mm-hmm. Um, how about a tune? Sounds yeah. a plan. Tune's not a problem. So, um, let me see. All right, you're gonna you're gonna make me find it and then play it. Go on, then. <laughs> go on, then. Uh, see how quick I can do that. <laughs> Let me think. <laughs> um, I, I could have uh, maybe maybe if you go on YouTube, type in um, what's his name? I can't think of his name now. So let's stick one on then, and while you're thinking of it, I'll put it on after. Yeah, all right. Because it's going to take me just a couple of minutes. I might download it. Tell you what, we we'll love uh, my favourite bands. Maybe, maybe you've got Lucky Radiohead. Lucky Radiohead, yeah, I reckon I have somewhere in here. 
Well, does that mean you're coming on members' churn soon then? If you like, like your music. You haven't been on yet. Might be a bit late for you though. What with your work on Saturdays? Yeah, we'll maybe get it organised for when Mark's got a day off Saturday. Yeah, looking forward to tomorrow. I'm always, I always look forward to tomorrow. Every time I get that time off, it's valuable to yeah. get down there to help them out. Right, here it is. I've got it. Happy days. Yeah, we knew we would. Hi, and welcome back, everybody. Um, we're on with Tony Hurst tonight and uh, commonly known as Mark from the chat room, also known as Mark Cox. Welcome back, fellas. Welcome back, bud. Thanks, Andy. So you, you were a bit nervous about coming on when you first talked about this. So I, I hope we've got you over that and you'll be looking forward to coming on the next time, Mark. Yeah, sound. No, no prob. That's nothing to worry about, is it? It's just three of us having a Skype chat. I know. I'm, I'm surprised um, Skype hasn't had no problems on my phone. Because um, when, when I try to sign out, it, the circle's going round and around and around and I'm, I've got to try three times before I can sign out of it. Um, oh, and, like, you, you hear many problems, like, things that you talk about, the, the, uh, it goes all quiet and things like that. But it's been no problem. Don't speak too soon, mate. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> I know. Well, I'd like to say a big thanks to Tony for uh, producing tonight because uh, my... Yeah, no- internet has just gone totally ridiculous lately um but uh, by all accounts i'm going to be connected to super fast fiber on the 6th of january so we should be all right from then on oh nice one it'll just be skype messing us up then so we'll, and we'll have to switch to one of the alternatives we've got sussed out yeah um this is this is my second um time talking live on uh like the last time was on Shake and Wake Radio. They're oh. based in America with Rick and Annie. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was on two hours with them. Um, got on the subject of uh, seven seven. How did how did the public uh, see uh, about seven seven? And I, I basically I I told them about uh, they were probably asleep, but you know taking taking on board, hearing what they're saying. Uh, and just taking that for you know as what happens but I was telling telling them about the fact that on the side of the bus there was um what was it, an advert? Absolute power, bold and brilliant. Yes. Yeah, slapped on the side of the bus. Yeah, give it yeah, that bus <laughs> that was like a tin of sardines and you could even see when you zoom in on some of it where the angle grinders had cut the roof pillars, couldn't you? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, cheers for that cheer tunes, uh, Tom, and uh, nice one. Hang on a minute. Yeah! <laughs> All right! Oh, that, that, that's it, uh, the, the mess is going on. She's, um wants me to check everything downstairs. I don't know why we don't... It. <laughs> Everything's all right. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I'm tra- are you posting that link in, uh, to my Skype regarding um, General Good Shafton? Yeah, it's there, I think. It's in the group Skype call. Right, because uh, I'm writing it down just in case you have any problems with uh, Skype, because I'm trying to sign out and I've been having problems with my phone and they claim I owe 300 odd pound Vodafone who I'm having problems with and they're a pain in Honest to God, trying to phone them up and speak to someone is it, it, a joke. 40 minutes I was phoning them up and I was on the phone. Uh, they, they would not answer the phone. They, they was, kept saying, them, sorry, we're too busy, blah, blah, blah. Oh, I've been dying to speak to someone regarding it and they're going to get a night. They're going to get a, a, an earful. Because um, I can't send any text messages on, on this phone. I've got to use my pay and go one. Oh, that's useless, isn't it? I know. <laughs> it's a bit like, but, like my bro- broadband. They say, well, it's quite fast. I said, yeah, fast is not the issue. The fact is when it drops, when I'm talking to quite a lot of people, 
and they're suddenly listening to silence or uh, the music player. And uh, I, I did make a point of telling them that every time I come back on, I do tell them that it's uh, technical glitches down to Sky Broadband. So I said, it's not really good advertising for you. So that's perhaps why they put me onto um, fiber without charging me all the extra. So hopefully. Yeah, so maybe third time lucky I'll get to speak to someone. Mm. Um, still haven't... Trying to find that... Uh, write down that link. Do you record these calls, Mark? Uh, I haven't got the device to record the calls. <laughs> right. I know um, a lot I'm not, I'm, I'm not a very technical uh, guy, like. I'm going yeah. a minute. Join the club if it wants. Yeah! That's lost. <laughs> I think she's gone now. <laughs> you said that in a very <laughs> quiet whisper. <laughs> yeah, I've got a seat of the cat. No problem. Oh, yeah, I've just heard the front door sh- sh- shut, so it's all good now. Oh, you're safe now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, Ma- Martin's on next. Wi-Fi. I mean, I've been t- t- telling people about Wi-Fi. Yeah. I, it does not a day goes by. I don't tell someone. It doesn't matter who it is. I I, I speak to strangers. Mm-hmm. I speak to old Bill. I even say to the to the when I see community support officers, um, phone the say to, uh, I pull someone up and say phone the police quick. Why? Two people down there impersonating police officers. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I've been I found out that they're doing away with uh, community support officers oh right yeah uh, and you know you, you'll have um, G4S Serco and all the rest of it oh that's we'll, 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 just, we'll just see what <laughs> see G- what happens G4S are running our local police now you know yeah 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 um, just just see what happens yeah, we've but, got, but we're ready for them. We've got a TV personality as police and crime commissioner and G4S are running the police. Mm. That yeah. way, doesn't it? Yeah. Is Tony still there? Yeah, I'm still here, mate. All right. I'm just writing that, trying to write that link down. I talk on the phone, but I can't, I can't type it. <laughs> I'm not very, uh, what is the I've word? Dro- I've dropped it in your Skype now, so if if you look on the one where my name is, it should be there, Mark. Yeah, but uh, I'll uh, I'll have a look in a bit. All right. Well, I'll save that link, and if you need it, I'll I'll I can even send you it on Facebook, can I? Yeah. All right. Yeah, that'll be the best way. Yeah, sounds. Yeah. <laughs> I'll um I'll what what I said to um Martin because it's it's his creation. The love kitchen, it's, it's, it's his baby. So, but what I did say to him is, uh, um, I'm on the radio. Uh, people's internet radio regarding the homeless. Um, do you fancy uh, getting on board and coming on for a chat and talk to them? He, he seems too busy, to be honest. Oh, that's exactly. So I'll, I'll, I'll just I'll I'll say to him tomorrow. I was on the radio last night talking about the homeless. Have a listen, um, see what he says, and I'll find out about the uh, houses, the house, dusty houses. Oh yeah, yeah, that's uh, yeah, certainly I'd, something worth looking at. I'd be interested in some of the stats. I heard on a show, I think I don't know, maybe about two weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago again now. And I think it might have been Martin Farrell's show again, and he had uh, a fella in there who, whose name escapes me, but he was talking about statistics and the amount of empty homes and the amount of people out of a home, and I was absolutely horrified at the, the, the ratio. There was far more homes empty than there was people needing one. I can't remember the exact stats, but I know I was pretty horrified by it or what I was listening to. It was amazing. No, and a lot of these empty buildings that they're not places that could perhaps get one or two people a home. You know, some of them are ten, twelve, twenty bedrooms, aren't they? Yep. 
yeah, there's some amazing but properties out there that could be sorted out, but no one's yeah. really interested unless there's a big fat profit in it for certain companies, and there's nothing getting done, is there? It's, it's ridiculous, isn't there? You know, the, the, the amount of empty places and, you know, with those people walking around freezing, nothing to eat and stuff like that, you know, the cold, the weather, and, you know, it's 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 sad. Yeah, it's not nice. It's not a nice thing to think about, especially this time of the year and that, and people out there. It, that is, uh, it's one of the things that gets me right down, but I have to keep bouncing back and staying strong. Keep <coughs> Sounds like Vin's familiar with General Good Shafting. He says, G- good old General Good Shafting from Shaftington. He says, if you don't know who you are, a general good shafting is what you'll get. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, he's, he is hilarious. Sounds about right. It seems to me, though, that a lot of people, even when they do know who they are, they're still getting a damn good shaft in at the minute. Mm. Don't seem to be much of a way around that, apart from, uh, I don't know, it's going to need a big change. It's going to need so- so- something really big to happen, like... One judge, let's just say, in one case that finally says, right, I can't do this anymore. I've got to do the right thing here. It'll change everything. But I I thought we was close to that day for, I don't know, a couple of years now. Yeah, I've just... (laughs) (laughs) I I showed someone the other day, um, the one where he's supposed to be going to court because they're going to... Oh dear, it sounds like we've lost Mark there. Yep, call dropped, it says it there. Oh, bless him. That's all right. I'll put a tune on. Okay, mate. Nice one. Jimmy Somerville. I know there's a lot of people out there that like this one. Hi everybody and welcome back. Uh, Sorry about that, we seem to have lost Mark and can't get him back on the Skype call right now. But I'd like to say a big thank you tonight to Mark for coming on and talking to us. All about the great work they do at the Love Kitchen in Liverpool. Um, anyone who can uh, give any help there or volunteer or make any donations, I'm sure they'd be uh, all gratefully received. And I'd also like to say a big thank you to Tony for, for helping out tonight because my uh, internet has gone terribly crap. And um, i just say that tomorrow... Will be a surprise because we've got enemy within tomorrow on True Frequency and People's Internet Radio. And as yet, we haven't got a guest, but I'm still working on that. So hopefully we'll have something sorted. If not, it will be a replay of an old show, but I'll be doing my best right up to the last minute. Um, stay tuned for Martin Farrell and Unique Lee, and we'll see you again tomorrow. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Mark. Good night, all. Cheers, Andy. Cheers, everyone. I think Mark's back, isn't he? Do you want to say good night? Yeah, I'm back now. Are you there, Mark? No. Right Cheers, everyone.